What's happening, everybody? Welcome back. This is Forgo, and today we're going to do something a little bit different with Red Goblin. We're going to do a little comparison in ABX using a Rage and a Brilliant. And I can tell you guys that this uniform is actually better than the No Way Home uniform for ABX. Now, from other videos, shout out to Free to Play Adventures that have been put out. It doesn't look like there's a big difference in World Boss content, but let's be honest. This ABX is where most players are really going to be thinking about buying the Red Goblin uniform. Now, I'm going to show you guys a couple little different things because I've been seeing a lot of different videos out there where people just keep using Black Cat. And Black Cat, unfortunately, is a paywall uniform. Now, her leadership is insane for this. 65% increase of all attack is very good. But something to remember is that Green Goblin does have 40% increase of all attack. And if you look at his leadership or look at his uh, energy attack with Black cat he has 67,000 energy attack and if you put him in the leadership then he has 63,000 so that's I means a pretty big difference but the thing that to remember or the thing to remember though is that craven actually does give the increase to damage to supervillain passive here by 35 percent right so i mean you have green goblin's leadership that is 40 percent increase of attack and you have black ass that's 65 percent increase of attack so you're gaining 25 25 percent attack from having black cat but with Craven, you're actually gaining 35% damage to super villains. Now, I want you to remember that, but I'm going to show you guys a little comparison just using this team right here. And then I'm going to show you guys a run where we're going to use Green Goblin's leadership and Craven's support passive. Now, Green Goblin, guys, is really, really insane for ABX. There's players that can actually cap out his score, but those players have 74, 75,000 energy attack, and they just have the character completely Jack. Now, right now, I do have a brilliant judgment on him because we are going to be comparing a brilliant judgment versus a rage because I know you guys are actually curious about this. Now, as far as my stats, they don't look too bad. My critical rate could be leveled up a little bit more, but my critical damage is maxed out. And, you know, so a pretty decent setup. Whenever I had the rage equipped, guys, all these stats were pretty much maxed out. My dodge was maxed out. My critical rate was maxed out. Everything was all looking pretty hunky dory. And I ended up putting four Odin's Blessings on him. And then we just have, you know, regular mythic energy attack gurus. This is a pretty feasible build for you free-to-play players out there. I, I probably will end up slapping more Oda's Blessings on this character, trying to drag up his critical rate as well, but that's the way he stands right now. And I mentioned in the last video that with Green Goblin guys, they really didn't really give him much of a stat bump at all. You're really just tier 3 him so you can use him in other content, so you can use his leadership, so you can use his support passive, and also so you just have the tier 3. He will do more damage with it because he does gain a little stat bump, and the tier 3 does do really, really good damage, and you definitely want to proc on this thing because it has a damage proc by 100%. That is nice. The ignore target dodge rate is also very very nice right and then of course the damage super villains right that's that's really sweet right and the trick with this character is you really want to throw in this too as much as possible it's kind of similar to gene gray whenever you're doing your rotations you want to slip in that too every so often so you get a little extra damage because those bombs add quite a bit of damage over a duration of three minutes which abx has it really does seem to help of course, he's got the heal here. I'm not going to be comparing this to the, the No Way Home uniform. There's a lot of similarities between them, in all honesty, guys. And they didn't even give him accumulation, which is insane, considering how strong he actually is. I mean, it's really nuts, guys. 100% all attack by 100% is pretty damn crazy. And then, of course, his passive, 30% increase of energy attack, which is definitely nice. And then his leadership, which is also nice for the 40% increase of attack to all allies and the 40% ignore dodge. Now, when you're playing this character, I'm going to be do, trying to do this with my emulator, so it's going to be a little a little wacky. But you either start off with the 5 or the 2nd skill, okay? Either way, it really doesn't matter all that much. Uh, it's really a preference thing. But if you start with the 5, you're going to get the invisibility and you won't get guard broken, so that's kind of nice. So you can literally hit the five, go the two, slide across, hit the three, and then go into the four, right? And that's what you're going to do for your first rotation, right? And then afterwards, you're going to do the same rotation again. You don't want to do your tier three on the second rotation. I've actually practiced this quite a bit, and you're definitely going to do more damage if you just do the five, two, three, four, five, two, three, four. Do that twice. And then on the third rotation, what you want to do, guys, is you want to use your fist skill first. You want to go ahead and use that five. We're just going to wait for that cooldown. You're going to hit, go ahead and hit that fist skill, right? And then you're going to hit the third skill and then the tier three. If you want to slip in that second skill, 
go for it. If you want to throw in that two skill, go ahead and do that, right? And then afterwards, you're just going to repeat the same process over and over and over. You know, five, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, three, tier three, or five, two, three, tier three. And you really just try to slip in that second skill as much as you can whenever you're playing with them because it will make a big difference, just like Gene Gray. It really does make a big difference using him. He does have a fully awakened Power of Angry Hawk set. He doesn't have an artifact. And I am using the Brilliant. Again, guys, we're going to be doing a comparison between a regular Rage, just a normal Rage, and the Brilliant. Now, this Brilliant, guys, does have an increase of all attack by 32%, right? And it does have the increase all elemental damage by 220%. This is nice, but actually, I think the type amplification might be better because Green Goblin, he moves around all over the place. So he actually builds up the meter as you're running through your skills. It might actually be better to have type amplification, but there's no way in hell that I'm going to re-roll this damn thing because it is extremely expensive. I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to settle for this. And this is another reason why my energy attack looks pretty decent because I do have this 32% on this CTP. I have around 120% energy attack on my cars to provides some perspective as far as you know how good this account is and 22 percent pierce and his uniform is at mythic and as far as his uniform options you know you have captain marvel which is you know kind of outdated these days you have Thena, which is terrific you have spider-man uh no way home which is still a good uniform a lot of people are already going to have it you have cyclops good support uniform and then you have thanos right and a lot of this is a terrific uniform a lot of people are going to have this so his uniform options are actually Pretty good. Not too bad at all. Really, really happy uh, with these uniform options. So I'll bring in the run for you guys right now. And you can see on the left side, we have the Judgment. On the right side, we have the Rage. And we're going to be doing, you know, pretty much the exactly same rotation. Now, I can tell you guys, like, between these two obelisks, the Rage is way more inconsistent. That thing procs at a lot of wacky times, and it really throws off your rotation big time as far as your damage. Because, I mean, if you don't get the proc on the Tier 3, on that four skill for the entire duration of those skills you start losing a lot of damage and then also you know if you're not getting in that second skill as much as possible trying to squeeze that thing in there to try to do a little extra damage right sometimes whenever you go five three four it's better just to go five three four instead of slipping in the two because you want that proc on that four skill during the entire duration the four skill is a very long skill it really it really depends guys where that proc is as far as when you're going to use your second skill or or not but I can tell you guys that I had to play the rage run on the right a bunch of times to try to get the best score possible a bunch of times really really annoying it's why I've always hated that damn thing I mean it's just I mean even with guaranteed critical race sometimes it really gets off but with the judgment guys it procs very very consistently it is nice like even if you have a regular judgment although I do think a rage is probably gonna do better in ABX a regular judgment would still be very, very consistent as far as proc king or a mighty judgment actually would do really well as well. Now, I don't really know again if having type amplification on my brilliant judgment would be better than having the all attack. I, I honestly have no idea, guys. I, I'm, again, there's no way in hell I'm going to re-roll it. But I want you to look at the scores between these two runs, right? On the left, we have, you know, look, I mean, 800,000. On the right, we have 800,000. We are doing more damage on the left side, right? About 500, 600,000 more damage than on the right side. But is that a significant amount, right? Is that a huge, huge difference? Not really. I mean, it, it, I guess it is in the scope of ABX, but... I mean, it's not as much as I really would have thought. Again, maybe if I had type amplification on the Brilliant Rage or the Brilliant Judgment, maybe it would have been a different story. That's another thing, guys. Like, I don't know how well he would perform with a Brilliant Rage. I do have one of those things. I mean, I could put it on him. It gets pretty expensive. Switch around these obelisks, especially considering their cost, the crystal cost of doing that. But, I mean, I, I could try that and see if that's actually better than my brilliant judgment, at least the way that my brilliant judgment is rolled. But, as you guys can see, the scores are pretty similar. They're not that far off. A little bit. But they're not, you know, like, it's not some insane difference between these two runs. And since it's burn season, it's honestly super, super easy to play with Green Goblin here, man. They're like really, really uh, gravy train. So, I mean, as you guys can see here, right, we have, you know, 
a pretty close score count here, right? On the left, we have 10,556,000. On the right, we have 10,134,000. So about a 400,000 difference. Again, your runs make all the difference, guys. But the judgment, I mean, just the judgment alone, not even brilliant, not even a mighty, just way more consistent in here, way more consistent than that rage. Now, I want to show you guys a run where... I'm actually going to be using Green Goblin's leadership and Craven on the side, all right? And remember, and this is with a brilliant judgment. And I want you to know that, I want you to notice that I don't have a CTP of Insight on, you know, my uh, Mystique or my Craven. If I did, I would do more damage. And I just recently got a CTP of Insight from the CTP chest. So I'll probably end up slapping that on. Well, I'll probably end up putting it on Craven, to be perfectly honest with you guys, because I do think Mystique's going to give us some love in the future. So I might go ahead and put that on Craven because he really is just going to be a support, unfortunately. But this is a free to play setup versus using Black Cat. And surprisingly enough, now I can't guarantee this, guys. While these runs are different, there's a lot of variables in these runs as far as when the proc lands. And if you're getting the proc on the entire duration of the four skill, if you're getting it on the entire duration of the tier three, like how often you're using the second skill, when you're using the second skill, there's a lot of different variations or variables in these runs that make a difference in the amount of damage that you're actually doing. But I can tell you guys that I only did this run about three or four times, right? About three or four times. And you can see the score on the right, right? Uh, top right, you know, 10,655,000, right? So that already lets you guys know that this team actually, and it makes sense, is actually performing a little bit better. Not much, not by a huge margin, but for you free-to-play players out there, it's actually really nice to know that. I see how everybody using the Black Cat over and over and over, and that, that might be the best way to go, but from my testing and from what I'm doing or from what I'm showing you right now, it really looks like Craven is a better option and just use Green Goblin in the leadership. Now, I could be wrong. I mean, I mean, I, I played, though, for a couple hours, and this is kind of the outcome I was getting, guys. I mean, if I'm already getting a better score using Craven just in three runs versus playing with uh, the the judgment run that you guys just saw for like an hour, well, then I I think it goes without saying that you know having Craven instead of Black Cat would probably be better, right? And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. I mean, you don't even need to have Craven you know awakened for ABX. You can actually just, you know, buy the uniform and put them in here and add that extra 35% damage to super villains. Right? And just go with that. And yeah, I mean, it. and guys, like, I'm going to slap, I mean, before this day is over, I'm going to slap a CTB of inside of my Craven here. I'm probably going to put some more Odin's Blessings on my Green Goblin, or Red Goblin, and try to do, try to get a better score. I really would like to at least get 11 million if I could. In all honesty, guys, I like to get, you know, try to get the, you know, in that 11 million range. With my energy attack on my cards, I just don't see myself you know, maxing out the score. I just don't see it, guys. These guys that are maxing out 74,000, 75,000 on their Green Goblin without the all attack on the Judgment. You know, using a Brilliant that has type amplification. So, I mean, you know, 10 million... 700,000 guys. So it's about 200,000 more damage than what I did whenever I used Black Cat's leadership. So, I mean, just from my testing and just from what I've done, it seems like using Craven is actually better than using Black Cat. But let me know what you guys think about Red Goblin in ABX. And I do stream on Twitch at 9 p.m. GMD plus 7 time. The link is in the description below. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care and have a good one. See everybody. Take care.